Welcome to another video explaining the universe using the particle model. My name is Bob DeHilster and I am your particle model guru. Today's video is titled Magnetic Field or Charge. I'm really going to be comparing magnet versus the battery, and I'm going to ask the question, why are the forces around the battery and the magnet defined differently when the compass needle reacts the same way? Place a compass around a magnet, place it around a battery, they seem to react uh, the same way, and yet they're defined differently as to what, what the cause is. So I went to the internet and looked up uh, something so I could show the uh, compass around a magnet. And this one happened to show iron filings as well. And clearly you can see the compass needle in each of the compasses lining up with what we generally call the field lines. And we have the, uh, you can see the lines here with the iron filings as well. So that's, uh, we've seen this often, pretty straightforward. So I looked for a, a battery that would have iron filings in a compass. Yep, you guessed it. Couldn't find any. Nobody generally does that. So I have to do it myself. And so I did this. I started with the magnet. And I have four compasses around the magnet. And, you know, the needle itself is a magnet. <clears throat> and uh, generally speaking, you will find that the south end, the white southern end of the magnet, points to the north of the, of the big magnet. And that's true here. The north end of the compass needle points to the south end of the magnet. And, and generally speaking, Wikipedia claims that magnetic fields are produced by moving electric charges. And the intrinsic, intrinsic magnetic moments of elementary particles associated with a fundamental quantum property, their spin. Somehow magnetic fields are generated by spin. But nonetheless, you can move the compass around the magnet and you can watch the needle change position as it goes around. When you put one up here, it'll be horizontal. Well, I did it with a battery and I got almost identical picture. I should have moved this down a little bit so these were over. I believe that this, these then would have been pointing exactly the same way as the magnet but it's close enough. Uh, in this case, you have the uh, south end of the uh, compass needle pointing to the positive, and the north end of the compass needle pointing towards the negative of the battery. And if you move it around, you'll, you'll see the thing change. It changes oddly, but it changes. What the explanation generally is, of course, uh, opposite attract and uh, like charges repel. But in this case, they're, they're assigning the north end of the needle as south, as, as negative, and it's pointing to the positive terminal of the battery. So it's, it's in that case, it's the uh, attraction of opposite charges, which they claim is causing the compass needle to move. My question, though, is what controls the compass needle? When, when, when you ask somebody, just an ordinary uh, person, uh, and maybe oftentimes a scientist or engineer, uh, the compass, what controls the compass? This compass needle? Oh, the compass needles follow the magnetic field line. Well, no, 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 I'm sorry. We draw the magnetic field lines using the compass. That previous picture I showed you back here, you can do this and you start putting points here and points here and points here and you connect that. We draw those lines using the compass needle. So it, 
The lines aren't controlling. The lines don't control the position of this. Uh, in, in this case, uh, you ask people, they'll say, well, unlike charges attract, and, and yeah, we're going to nominally make the south negative so that it goes to the positive. Well, I'm saying no because the particle model basically rejects the idea that there is even a charge. And you could draw magnetic field lines around the battery, but the magnet is well organized and it generates the field lines as generated by using the compass are very well ordered and smooth and, and neat, just like you like to see it. Try that with a battery, it's, it's not so good. The, the battery is organized, but it's organized to produce a voltage. And, and in terms of controlling the compass needle, it's quite irregular. Yet, as you move it around, it does move. So we have two different forces here. We have magnetic force and we have uh, plus or minus, and we have charge. Two different forces to do the same thing, to move the compass needle. <coughs> well, the compass, I'm sorry, does nature have to invent two different forces in order to uh, make this happen? I say no, when the needles react the same, the probability is it's the same thing causing them to move. Okay, in the particle model, we have uh, talked about this. Uh, in fact, one of my very first videos was explaining how a magnetic field gets generated through a straight copper wire. And and so, re so regardless, uh, the end result of uh, Lots of study and analysis. I've determined G1 particle goes from the north end to the south end of the magnet, out and around and back, and out and around and back. By the way, you'll notice that they also come in and out the sides, and, and that was seen with the iron filings and the first slide I showed. Those lines were actually coming in right about here and right about there. So, uh, but the mag in the particle model, the magnetic field line is a stream of G1 particles orbiting around and through the magnet. Okay, so uh, the force causing this position, however, is G2 gravity. Around any object, you have a G2 particle field and a G1 particle field. Then you got G1 particles flowing in this direction and, and in this direction, and by the time you get through analyzing it, you have a net force pointing towards the center of the magnet using point-to-point -point gravity type logic. Same thing here and here. <coughs> and uh, when, the, when you put the compass here and the compass needle is there, you're gonna have an equal force here, an equal force here, and that's the force that positions the needle. It's G2 gravity. And that uh, I did analysis in previous videos showing in different places how those forces would work to position the needle. So now I'm going to compare G1 and G2 gravity. We just did this. G2 gravity controls the compass needle. G1 gravity controls the rotor of a gyroscope. I stole this from a previous video, uh, modified it so it stands on the earth, perfectly vertical. And this is G1 gravity caused by, uh, uh, and F1 is the net force of G1 gravity, and F2 is the net force of G2 gravity. And these, uh, if this is perfectly aligned and the rotor is uh, balanced in terms of mass, it's going to sit there and be horizontal, just like this is. This is level one gravity working, and, and the level two gravity is doing the same thing, only level gravity two particles are moving at very high speed, G1 particles are moving at speed C. Well, you take a compass and you go around the battery and you can, you can try to plot it. I just drew 
lines here. Uh, took some time a while back to prove to myself that the G1 particles flow this way, through and around the battery, down this way, through and around the battery, and that's these are particles, G1 particles moving here, G1 particles, particles. It's made up a stream of G1 particles orbiting around and through the battery, just like it does for the magnet. The magnetic field around the battery is the primary mechanism for storing energy. Now, that's, that's not taught, and may, maybe you're not sure I'm uh, on the right track here, but one of the interesting points about this is uh, G1 particles moving at speed C. This is moving very fast around these particles. So we, you, when you connect this to a circuit, you have an instant source. G1s moving at speed C that are readily available to move around and through the circuit. And if you've seen any of my videos on circuits, you realize that this speed is, is uh, quite important. And I explained in those videos some of the reasons why work, run, uh, they move at speed C instead of at a very slow rate, like they say the electron moves quite slowly. Okay, so generally the conclusion to the question, why are the forces around the battery and magnet defined differently when the compass needle reacts the same way? Shouldn't they be the same force? Are they both magnetic? Are they both charged? Neither. The forces controlling the compass needle is G2 gravity. Magnetic fields and uh, are, are uh, an effect of G2 gravity holding the G1 particle in orbit around the magnet and the battery. Uh, in summary, uh, right from the beginning, the, uh, the TPM model uh, says that since there is no physical property that defines charge, we had to reject that concept out of hand. The magnetic field is a high intensity stream of G1 particles it's controlled by G2 gravity. And as a consequence, it controls the needle as well. And the magnet has a stronger magnetic field than the battery because the magnet is well organized. The battery is uh, organized to generate a voltage, but not necessarily organized to be uh, generate a, a, a magnetic field. Although batteries that have a good magnetic field are probably better batteries. And G2 gravity is a force that controls the compass needle around the magnet and the battery. My final statement, there is a magnetic field around the battery. And uh, that's something that people don't really talk about. Uh, I'm going to plan to do two more videos and this one about uh, magnets, uh, the magnet uh, field and charge. I, I did it as a, pr a prelude to uh, doing uh, the cathode ray tube and looking back at the capacitor and the magnet. So I'm going to be doing those two video one of those two videos next. My name is Bob DeHilster and I am your particle model guru. Thank you for your attention.